Preston Physics, Grade 11, Electricity and Magnetism, Note 6, Ohm's Law, Kirchhoff Circuit Analysis. The first thing we're going to look at is Ohm's Law. Now with this, we know when a charges flow through a load, they experience some resistance. Now this resistance results in a loss of potential energy. Ohm's Law states that the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current or what we actually change that around to is the voltage equals the current times resistance where V is the voltage in volts I is the current in amps and R is the resistance measured in ohms now if we look at the first example we have a toaster oven which has 9.65 amps of current and it's plugged into a wall with 120 volts how much resistance does it have? Well, we write down our given and required information. We write down that resistance equals voltage over a current. We take 120 and divide it by 9.65, and we end up with 12.4 ohms. The next thing we're going to look at is adding resistance. Now, the total resistance in a circuit can be calculated differently in a parallel circuit versus a series circuit based on the properties of electricity. Now these two equations are different but very similar. A series circuit is very easy to add up the resistance. A parallel circuit is far more difficult and the example we're going to look at deals with a parallel circuit. Now when we're looking at a series circuit to find the total resistance of the circuit all we have to do is take each resistance and add it together. So if we have three resistors like this circuit here, our total resistance would just be the three resistors added together. Now in a parallel circuit, it's a little bit different. We have three resistors again, but when we're finding the total, it's actually the inverse of all of the values. So the inverse of the total equals the inverse of the first resistor plus the inverse of the second and so on. So when we look at our example, we've got a circuit that's got four resistors, the first four ohms, the second 24 ohms, the third three ohms, and the fourth 12 ohms. Now we can do this the long math way, which I'm gonna show you in this note, but I can also show you a trick on your calculator which makes it a little bit easier tomorrow in class. So we've got RT equals or sorry, the inverse of RT equals the inverse of R1 plus the inverse of R2 plus the inverse of R3 plus the inverse of R4. We need to now find a common denominator so we can add these fractions, which is 24. When we put 24 on the bottom of the denominator for each fraction and then add them all together, we get 17 over 24. We now take the inverse of that value to find our total resistance, which equals to 24 over 17, and that's 1.41 ohms. The next thing we're going to look at is Kirchhoff's laws. Now, he has laws for series circuit and parallel circuits. For a series circuit, what Kirchhoff was able to determine was for each load, the current is constant throughout the circuit. He then looked and saw that the voltage is split up for each of those loads. So the current is kind of like people walking around the circuit. They all have one path. They all have to go through each resistor. The voltage, however, is kind of like spending money throughout the circuit. You get some money at the battery, you have to spend all of that money throughout the circuit, so it's kind of divided between each load. Now, in a parallel circuit, he decided or discovered that there were a few things that were a little bit different. What he actually found was that for each load, the current is now split up. Those people walking around the circle, they have three different paths they can take. So they split up amongst each of the resistors. But the voltage in a parallel circuit, well, it's the same. Because no matter what resistor I go through, I have to spend all of that money that I got at the battery. So really, the voltage has to be the same at each resistance in a parallel circuit. We'll do the first example together and I'll let you do the second one on your own. Here we're finding the voltage in a series circuit. 
So we're given all of the voltages and we need to find the fourth voltage or the fourth resistor's voltage. We've got the total voltage given as 120 volts. We know that voltage 1 is 36, voltage 2 is 28, and voltage 3 is 54 volts. We need to find the fourth. So when we put our equation down of V total equals V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 and rearrange for V4, we end up finding that there's only two volts left at that last resistor. And since all the voltage has to be used up, we know the last resistor has a voltage of two volts. Finally, we're going to do a circuit analysis together, where we have to find all the values that are given in the chart below. Now, we know that there's 120 volts and 12 amps given in the battery. We know some other values that are given in the circuit. The first thing we can find, though, is the resistance of the battery by using Ohm's law. We find the resistance to be equal to 10 ohms. Now, going forward, we know that the battery is in series with the first resistor. So that means that their currents are the same. So we can find 12 amps to be that first resistor's current. After that, we can now find the voltage of the first resistor. And we find it to be 96 volts by using Ohm's law. The next thing we know is that we can find the voltage remaining in this circuit. V2 and V3 have to be the same because they're in parallel with each other. There's only 24 volts left, so both of those values have to be equal to 24. 96 volts were used at the first resistor. Next, we can find the current of I2 and I3, but we have to find I3 first by using Ohm's law. We know that there's 8 amps in I3. That leaves 4 amps left over for I2 because all of the current has to be used up when we're in a parallel circuit. And then finally, we can find R again by using Ohm's law for R2, and it's equal to 6 ohms. These questions are probably the most difficult in this unit. The questions associated with this note are 10 to 13 in your yellow duotangs. Take extra care while doing question 11, as it is difficult, but it's something that we need to know how to do.